Hello, this is Pastor Peter with Dayspring Cypress Church, and we're so glad that you're joining us today for these uh, Bible studies that we have, Living Like Christ. I truly believe that if you get God's Word inside of you and you continue on with these Bible studies, the Lord will begin to transform your life in ways you can never imagine. We're going to get right into it because we got a two-part message uh, starting today with the first one, which is Forgiveness, Part 1. Part 1 is Forgiving Yourself. So, the objective of these Bible studies is to help build Christian character. And this is a life choice. It's built from a genuine relationship and commitment to Jesus Christ as your Lord. It's a decision you must make in order to live like this. You know, forgiveness is one of those difficult topics that as a pastor, I, I see it all the time and I hear it all the time. It's one of those character traits, one of the Christ uh, characteristics that we need to have but are difficult. So the first one we're going to talk about today is forgiving yourself. So forgiveness, in the Greek, it means to let it go. Wow. Plain and simple. To let it go. To forgive yourself, it starts with accepting that we have been forgiven by Christ. To forgive ourselves uh, for all the things that we have done, whether big or small, it requires us accepting the work of the blood and the cross. See, forgiving yourself means that you no longer feel guilty and that you then let go of the past and start moving forward under God's grace. Okay? Many people are tormented by what they've done. They can't believe what they've done. Especially the closer they get to Christ, they feel so sorrowful and remorseful. But what can happen is it turns to shame. You see, guilt brings you to the cross. Shame turns you away from the cross. I'm hoping that after these studies on forgiveness, you will then, if you have shame, it will just turn to guilt, which will turn you to the cross so that God can heal you and you can move forward with Christ so that you can live like Christ. Let's get started with our first scripture. It's in 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 through 20. And this is uh, going to be from the Message Bible. So it says, My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. It's also the way to shut down debilitating self-criticism, even when there is something to it. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. Dear friends, once that's taken care of, and we are no longer accusing or condemning ourselves, we're bold and free before God. We're able to stretch out our hands and receive what God, excuse me, what we asked for because we're doing what he said, doing what pleases God. This word I used was debilitating or that the scripture used was debilitating. You know what debilitating means? That you're weak, you're exhausted. When you're debilitated, you're useless. You see, we're no use to anyone being debilitated. And sometimes the sins of our past and the fact that we can't forgive ourselves debilitates us. It's debilitating. You see, but once we get past it, once we're able to accept what Jesus did on the cross, that his forgiveness was for us and for our sins, we can move past debilitation, shame and guilt, and then we can be bold and free to live for Christ and you know why that is? Because his spirit is then living inside of you. This is what that scripture said. And so this comes from practicing real love with ourselves, not just with other people. I know some people that really can accept and forgive other people so freely, but they have a hard time doing it for themselves. They can't believe what they did when they were a kid or a teenager some that they are ashamed of what they've done just last week. And I, I get all of that. I understand. But you see, do you see yourself as God sees you? Because if you believe in him, he sees you as a forgiven child. He died on the cross to forgive us. He is our father in heaven. You see, a forgiven child believes in what Jesus did on that cross, this cross right here, this cross that I have in the background, they confess their sins 
and they repent of their sin. Repent means to turn away. You no longer do it anymore. You see, the reason that some of us have such a hard time forgiving ourselves is because you just can't believe what you've done or you just think that maybe other people have it together. Listen, Romans 3, 23 is very clear on something. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Read that scripture, look at it. Because when you look at the cross, he's already forgiven us. All we must do is act and move in that forgiveness. Let's go on to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 in the New King James Version. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, some people are in this place, well, God already knows what I did. Why do I need to confess it to him? Because with life and death, it comes from the power of the tongue, right? We speak life and death to our situations. Yes, your heavenly father knows that you did these things. If you're a parent and you catch your kid doing something, paint everywhere maybe, or they're writing all over the walls and you say, did you do this? Most of the time, kids are going to say, no, I didn't do it. But you know that they did it. So you hold off and you hold off and finally they'll admit to you. Well, once they admit it, what happens? You can then move on. You can show them why it's not good to do that. You can discipline them. You can then go on to cleaning up the mess so that you can move forward. Our Father in Heaven is no different. He wants to clean up the mess of your past when you confess it to Him so He can deal with it, with you personally. Sometimes people have this thought, well, if I confess my sins and everybody in the world is going to know, I don't want everybody in the world to know. Listen, sometimes there are consequences and there may be things that other people may discover, but for the most part, God wants to deal with your sins with just Him. You may confess your sins to a brother or sister in Christ, but God is the one who is going to restore you. He wants to heal you from it. He wants to help you move forward. You see, to live like Christ, you must live in Christ. To live in Christ, you must live with Him. So don't shut off those things from the past. Yes, He does know it. So now is the time to confess those things because according to what we just read, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, cleansing is what He did for you when you were baptized. If you haven't been baptized, then this is the time. Go ask your church, go ask your pastor to baptize you. Once you understand forgiveness and repentance, if you've not been baptized in water, then the next step is for you to be baptized. The unrighteousness that he uh, cleanses us from is all your sins, the big ones and the small ones. Listen, your sin is not so great. It's not stronger than the cross and the blood that he shed on that cross. There isn't. If there was one sin that you've committed that you think that he can't forgive, then what you're saying is the work that he did on the cross, the blood that he shed on the cross is more powerful than the sin you committed. There is no sin more powerful than the blood that he shed on the cross. You see, the Lord overcame the cross. He rose from the dead on the third day. He conquered death. He conquered sin. He destroyed it. He defeated it. And so there is no sin. There's no murder, abortion, lying, lusting, thieving, all of the, I mean, put all the sins together. He took all the sins all the way to the world, to the cross. He nailed it to the cross and then he overcame. He had victory over the cross. You see, he had that so that when we believe in him, we can share in that same victory. When we understand that that cross is forgiveness and you understand that all of your sins have been forgiven, you can be freed and you can move on. You can move forward. You see, what happens is, is that um, we believe that he forgives other people's sins, but he can't possibly forgive ours. See, that's just so far away from the truth. He forgives yours just the way he forgave everybody's sins. He forgave all sins. And once you accept that, you're able to move forward. Look at what Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 15 have to say about it. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ, excuse me, of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15 says, therefore, let us as many as are mature have this in mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. 
what he's saying here is that God will reveal this to you to forget those things in the past, that you have an upward call if you believe it's an eternity with the Lord. Living in the past will not get you moving forward and it will not get you closer to God. Living in the past debilitates you. It prevents you from doing what God has created you to do. You see, the past is there to remind you of what can happen apart from God. Did you get that? Yes, those things happened. And it's in your memory. And so if you broke the plate and you glue it back together again, you can still see the cracks. You can look at that plate and say, man, that's the plate that I dropped when I was playing football in the house when I shouldn't have been. The plate may be glued together again, but you probably won't ever use it again. You see, so the past is there to remind us of what can happen apart from God. But what's in front of you is what God promises when we believe in him, when we give him everything. And we have salvation in front of us, an, e an eternity of love and joy and peace that's just waiting for you. Brothers and sisters, forgiving yourself, it's essential, it's essential to realizing that Christ already forgave you on the cross and that his forgiveness is stronger than anything you've ever committed. Jeremiah 31 and verse 34, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 34 says this, God remembers our sins no more. He doesn't pretend it didn't happen, but he chooses not to remember. We can also choose not to remember those sins, not to remember them in this way. Not that you don't, re you've completely forget and don't use that for something better. You know, if you understand that you created, you, you committed a sin and you did something terrible because of whatever, you're hanging with the wrong people or listening to the wrong music or whatever, then that memory that you have is so that you don't do that again. Okay. But don't let that hold you down. So when your past sins come to mind, you can do one of two things. These are one of two things you can do. You can dwell on them. This leads to a cycle of sin and guilt over and over again. This can be very destructive to you and to your family and to anybody that's around you. It can lead to a life of self-condemnation, which means that you no longer see God's grace. You don't really see and understand what he did on the cross. You don't comprehend the power of forgiveness that comes from the cross. Instead, what you see is yourself and what you did. You put your head down in shame. That's debilitating. You're no good in the kingdom of God like that. Or the second thing you can do when your old sins come to memory is you can believe in our faithful, all-powerful, and loving God forgave you on that cross. See, once you do that, you can start living a life of freedom and peace in Christ. Once you reach this level of spiritual maturity and self-forgiveness, you will find it easier to start forgiving others of their sins and their transgressions toward you. Listen, that picture on the back is a reminder of what he did, of the forgiveness that he gives us so freely. He sacrificed he died on that cross to forgive our sins. That cross is rightfully for us, but that's not a reason to hold our head in shame. No, it's a reason to obey our God, to trust our Lord, to follow what he says and to do what he says. Some of you can't get past what you've done and that's stopping you from doing greater things in God's kingdom. Yes, you did them. Admit them to God. Admit them to a brother, a pastor, a sister in Christ, somebody who's more spiritually mature, if that helps. But you have to go to God. And once you do that, remind yourself, look at the cross and remind yourself, man, he did that for me. He did that for the sin that I just confessed to him. You see, from that, when you believe it, freedom should be coming from your voice. Freedom should be in your heart. Peace should surround you. And the strength to forgive others will follow. I truly hope that you get this here and you tune into the next one, Forgiveness Part 2, because it's going to be about forgiving others. But here are some takeaway questions for you on this. If you're in a group setting or by yourself, is there anything, question number one, is there anything holding you back from forgiving yourself? If so, 
what is it? The second question, do you understand and accept the price that Jesus paid on the cross to forgive your sins? If you don't, start asking God and have that in your group discussion. And the last question is, how will your life be when you forgive yourself? How will your life look? Because I'm believing that everybody who's watching this that's struggling with self-forgiveness at the end of this will know that they can forgive themselves and they'll move on to do what God has called them to do. I love you guys. If you haven't heard this, I'm going to tell you again. Jesus loves you and so do we. I believe that your best days are yet to come. The past is in the past for a reason, but your future is so bright. God bless you. We love you. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.